All right, welcome back to section 9.2. Let's carry on with a different example. Um, so this example is a little bit different because in the previous one we were given statistics. We were told what X bar was, we were told what S is. And now we have raw data. So let's see how that's going to change everything. We're going to construct a 99% confidence interval about the population mean weight in grams of pennies minted after 1982. And then we're going to assume um, S equals 0 0.02 grams, which is helpful if you're doing it by hand. So remember, um, when we see confidence interval, we are going to panic. All right, so P uh, stands for parameter. It helps organize our thoughts. So we're looking for the population mean weight of pennies minted after 1982. Um, our assumptions, we have three. Simple random sample, eh, we'll assume so, um, is, what's our sample size? 17? Is that less than 5% of all pennies minted after 1982? Yes, so I'll put a check mark. And then finally, um, we have three things. Is the population normal? Do we have large sample size? Or is the sample data normal without outliers? Okay, so at some point in a previous example, we were told that the population was normal, um, but it doesn't say so here. So let's look at this. So this first one is a box plot. And there's no stars, right? If there's an outlier, we would see a star right there. Um, but we don't have that. So this box plot is telling us no outliers. And check this out. We didn't, we did our normal probability plot very tediously. We did the normal probability plot. We traced it. We got all the um, normal scores. We ran a linear regression coefficient on the normal score versus the data value. And then once we got that R, the linear correlation coefficient, we were able to determine if it was normal. Phew, it was tedious. Check this out. This is um, something in Minitab. It's a normal probability plot, but it has these boundaries, these dotted lines. If all the data fa values fall within those lines, it's linear. And if it's linear, we know it is normal. Moral of the story. Our third one, what we're going to say is data is normal without outliers. Okay. Name that test. It's a T interval. We just saw that we're going to use the data, not the statistics option. We're going to use data since we have this list. And we saw that our confidence interval was this. Okay, so now we're on to C. So N, name that test. I stands for interval. C, our conclusion. Same template. We are 99% confident All right. that the true population mean weight of pennies, population mean weight of pennies, minted after 1982, it's a long variable, is between, or it's a long parameter. All right, and then actually, let me just for consistency sake, this was all different, just so then our template is in red. All right, is between um, 2.4516, 1.4516, 1.4516, 1.4516, 1.4516, 1.4516, 1.4516, 1.4516, 1.4516, 1.4516, 1.4516, 1.4516, 1.4516, 1.4516, 1.4516, 1.4516, 1
Let's remember the units. What are they? Grams and 2.4767 grams. Okay. A couple of reminders. Remember, it's not a guarantee that the actual parameter lies in between these two values. Remember, that's what that 99% confidence is. This is telling us that it's a proportion, 90%, 99% of all confidence intervals constructed about the sample mean, 99% of those confidence intervals will have a correct mean that's in between the confidence interval. So 99% of the confidence intervals will actually capture the mean. Okay, and we have no idea. This might capture it, it might not. We have no idea. So that's why it's really important to state the confidence level. Okay, so we saw both cases of the T interval. One when we have statistics, when we're given the statistics, given the mean, given the standard deviation. And then our other strategy when we have the raw data. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out the sample size if we have a certain level of confidence we want to obtain and a certain margin of error. Okay, and then we can rearrange our confidence interval to get our formula. And our formula is n is equal to z sub alpha over 2 times s divided by e squared. And then again, we round up. All right, so let's look at an example. We want to know how large a sample would be required to estimate the mean weight of a penny manufactured after 1982 within 0 0.005 grams with 99% confidence. Okay, so um, this is telling us that we have to find n, how large a sample, within 0.005 grams that's our keyword for our margin of error. Within is the keyword for the margin of error. And then we have 99% confidence. So what's our alpha? All right, so it's 1%. It's what's left over, but decimal form. So there you go. Okay, so um, let's see. Let's write out our formula. I always like to write it out, and then we can see what we're missing. So to get n... We're going to be looking at z sub alpha over 2 times our sample standard deviation over e. And we're going to square it. OK, so we have e. We have sigma, but we can assume if it's a good sample that standard deviation will be the same. So the only thing we would need is z sub alpha over 2. All right, and even though we're, we use t distribution, when we do sample size, we go back to the z curve, just in case you were wondering. OK, so two ways to get our z sub alpha over 2. You guys can use your z distribution all the way at the bottom. And it tells you. what the critical value is for a 99% confidence interval. Alternatively, remember that critical value is also area to the right. So let's see, 0 0.001 over 2 is 0 0.005, OK? So if we know the area and we're trying to find the value, that's an inverse norm function on our calculator. Inverse norm, the parameters are area to the left. So we would have to do 1 minus alpha over 2. And then we would do the mean. We're on the z distribution, hence the z, so it's just 0, 1. All right, and so that's the other way to get that number. So you guys can either use your normal distribution, that chart that's given on your formula sheet, it's in the back of the book, 
or you can use inverse norm. However you slice it, however you want to do it, that's what's going right here. Okay, so you're going to carefully do that calculation. Remember to square everything. And you're going to get 106.158. And we only round up in a couple of occasions, right? And then this is one of them. We're going to want to round up. So this is really telling us that we need 107 pennies. That's the size of our sample if we want to hit a 0.005 margin of error and a 99% confidence.